Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and this is episode 2 of the flowers of the zodiac. Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, and Sagittarius. But today, we're focusing on Aquarius. So my friends, as I have said for some time now, but I'm oft echoed by those with less imagination. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and enjoy. So here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Okay, this is the continuation, as you already know from the intro, uh, episode two of the Flowers of the Zodiac, concentrating on Aquarius. Now, let me consult my book. The flowers of Aquarius are the violet and the primrose. I'll stick a little picture up here. Now, violets, obviously, are violet. Primroses can range in colour, but in this particular film, I'm going to be picking up on the pink ones. So, I thought, purple and pink. Perfect time to crack out bloodlust palette uh, because people were complaining there's too many pinks and not enough purples. First time I used it, I managed to find the purples. But this is still a teaching channel, and by warrant of that. I will still be going at a speed that even complete beginners will be able to keep up with because I don't want anybody getting left behind and not being able to follow along. Uh, it's, that's, that is something that really bugs me when I'm watching other tutorials which are meant to be tutorials and the person delivering said tutorial cuts some of the blending out or speeds it up or only shows you doing one eye and the other eye is done off camera and you just think it's not a tutorial okay now if my tutorial goes too slowly for you there is a speed widget on youtube it's up there somewhere Feel free to use it, okay? Um, I've spoken about the difference between deep set and hooded lids for quite some time now because I realised that so many people didn't realise the difference. I've got deep set eyes but even I thought I had hooded lids when I first started watching YouTube tutorials. Then I started doing some research and reading because when you get woken up at stupid o'clock in the morning <clears throat> with pain insomnia and you're skint and can't do your usual splurge of shopping, you read things. So I was researching into different techniques for um, winged liners and cut creases for hooded lids. And realised that I don't actually have hooded lids, I've got deep set eyes. And that was the point that I realised that even some of these bigger beauty gurus on here totally get it wrong. So 
from very early days I've been talking about the difference between the two types of eyes. The fact that people get them confused because of the similarities in the way that eyeshadow performs on them and the different workarounds for both types of eye. I have recently heard other channels piggybacking onto this and starting to parrot some of the things that I'm saying but not entirely sure they completely understand what they're talking about to be quite honest. Anyway. I'm about to insert a clip which will be very up close and personal because when I zoom in, I zoom in to this area here not, I still want you to see all of my face no, I zoom right into my eyes, okay and I'm going to talk you through the difference between the two types of eyes how to work out which type of eye you have and the workaround for it once that is done I will be back to put some of this onto these. Right, here's your clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%, and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So. What are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, 
sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey, I am back. Okay. I'm going to be using some of the Morphe Jeffrey brushes today simply because they're pink and why not? Um, this is the JS8 synthetic blending brush and I'm going to start off with I think uh, let's start off with Deviant Now, at the end of this, I will be talking to you about the flowers, just briefly, telling you what they represent. But I like to keep the middle bit about the makeup, so that if you're not interested in the astrological elements, you can just ignore those bits. Right, always hold the brush right at the very end, so you put as little pressure on your eyes as possible. And starting about here, little circular blending movements. <clears throat> now I'm the kind of person that likes to build colour up. So I tap the brush off quite a bit. Rather than going warmth with a huge amount of pigment. Now you'll notice this is, I always call my blending, this is the Viennese waltz of the makeup world. Okay, we have, let me pick up a little bit more pigment, we have natural turns going this way towards the nose, a bit of a fleckle in the middle when we get here, and then reverse turns to come back again. Now the reason that we do this, or the reason that I do this, instead of just, you know, windscreen wiping with it like you see a lot of people doing. <clears throat> Firstly, it gives you a softer blend than just the windscreen wiper and does it. It fluffs the edges out nicely for you and is much easier to blend two shades together. But also, in less than a month, I'm going to be 46. I've lost over 14 stone, which is over 200 pounds now. So the skin on my eyelids moves. So you can end up with like um, a tiger stripe or a barcode effect. And by doing it this way, we're very gently moving the skin of the eyelid, first in one direction, and then in the other. which will help prevent the tiger striping. Now with this eye I do struggle, you can see I've got super super deep creasing just here. This is where my eye was pulled around when I was you know, four or five years old at the ophthalmic hospital. Um, I do struggle with that, this circular movement doesn't always stop the tiger striping and whatever colour I'm putting on my lid I have to stretch my lid out but I'll cover that when we get to that stage. So, blend, 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 blend. That's nice. That's really pretty, actually. Right, I'm just going to clean the brush off on a microfiber cloth. And I'm going to go into... I think I'm going to go into Royal Pain, which is this pinky shade. I 
there's an awful lot of kick up in the mattes in this palette but you just tap off back into the pan and then when you need to pick up more pigment you just pick up the kick up from the top of the, uh, the pan itself this is what I mean about you suddenly get a warmth of pigment that you then have to blend out if you don't tap off well enough I mean, fortunately Jeffrey's ones will actually blend quite nicely and I do struggle here and here both sides I have um, I can get very very dry skin almost almost like an eczema um, which can make it quite difficult to get pigment to adhere so I don't mind if it sort of like grabs onto pigment just there because it saves me a bit of a job to be honest but that's another reason why we always start our blend from the outside in because it's much easier to blend out if you do suddenly get a warmth of pigment here than it is to try and blend it out here and whatever size the head of your brush is that's pretty much how far it will blow the pigment out that's why I said if you've got smaller space then just use slightly smaller brushes and you can see they're blending really nicely together I'm just going to grab a little bit of Deviant again just to go over the edges of that royal pane just make sure we've got a good soft blend there we go right back into royal pain for this eye shh phone I'm busy behave you know it's always the way I can be editing or watching telly or watching YouTube films rarely get notifications in the minute I sit down to record the phone starts buzzing no matter what time of day I sit down as well it's like really come on now play fair with this eye you will see me kind of stretch it out using the windscreen wiper movement try and get really deep in there before I do the circulars but I can still sometimes get stuck with the barcoding effect <clears throat> or oh, the tiger stripe talking of tiger stripe I've just been I've been starting to watch that um, tiger king sorry just having a drink <clears throat> silicon straw for those of you wondering I'm not killing any turtles um yeah I, I started to watch that Tiger King I'm about three episodes in and it's just like I'm fascinated by it all I mean the way that that Joe Exotic just walked into the gift shop and went uh, I'm going to tell you so you don't hear it from anybody else. We've just had to keep a have their arm ripped off. If y'all want a refund, I understand. Okay. Uh, but he never thought he was going to have to say that word. I say that. It's like you look at it and you think, oh my God. Because I've worked as... Um, when I've worked at some of the places where I've been kind of higher admin management, <clears throat> I've been responsible for like um, risk assessments and health and safety checks and all that sort of thing. And I just think, uh, where was the risk assessment saying, don't stick your hand through the side of the cage when you're feeding them? It's just like, really? What I've done now, I've taken all the colour off of the brush and I'm just very lightly blending and buffing where the two colours meet just to soften that blend a little 
without actually adding any more pigment to it. I always get more fallout this side because this eye moves more. Okay, time to deepen this up a little. So I'm going to come down for a slightly smaller blending brush. I'm going to carry to the JS12, which looks like this. And I'm going to go into... Hmm... I think I'm going to go into High Queen, High King, sorry, initially. I'm not sure if this will actually be deep enough for what I want. And if it isn't, I'll change pigment. But, oh no, that's good. That works. Okay. So I'm just doing tiny, tiny little circular movements through where my natural crease falls. And just blending it up far enough that it deepens. I don't know if you can see the difference there. It just gives a little bit of extra depth on the outer corner here. I don't want to go too deep with this because obviously <clears throat> primroses and violets are not, you know, blood red. They're not super deep purples. And I want to do a nice kind of pinky, violety, soft look today. Just adding a little bit of this hiking just on the outer edge of the mobile lid there. I like that. That's pretty. Do I think I've used hiking before? I'm still working my way through using all the shades because um, I've been. It's weird, I mean, to be honest, this sort of staying at home thing is, is very similar to my life as is being a disabled person with chronic pain anyway. Um, <clears throat> but whereas before, you know, the postie would stand and have a chat with me for a couple of minutes, or the woman that was delivering my maids would stand and chat for a couple of minutes. Um, they now don't do that and that plus all the added you can feel it, it's a palpable sense of oh my god in the air I just if I'm not filming I'm just not putting makeup on which is really not me so I haven't played with a lot of this palette yet right I'm just going to dip into Blood Queen Just to deepen up the very, very outer edge and literally just a hair's depth I want to go. Just a fraction deeper. Yeah, it's nice. I will admit I do wish this had um, a beautiful purple, the sort of, I wish it had one that was the same colour as his I'm Royalty lipstick, put it that way. But, I guess the purple in Alien was, was that kind of colour. And he doesn't tend to repeat shades as a rule. Um, I'm still gutted that he's getting rid of um, Alien though. That is my absolute favourite of all his palettes. So the fact that he's getting rid of it is actually quite disappointing, shall we say. Let me just grab my dusting full out away brush just because I know if I don't do that when I'm editing it it's going to drive me absolutely crackers 
Okay, I'm going to go in with one of the Jeffrey lip brushes, which is the JS24, is that sort of shape? I love it, it's clean, it's just stained. It uh, gets right down into that corner there, which is awesome. And I'm going to go in with, I think, take the crown. Now obviously you never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. So I'm going in with a dry brush. Coating both sides and then I will spray it using, can you see how long this is still going for? I tell you, you might pay more for the Slay All Days from Gerard than you do from I don't know, Rimmel, L'Oreal, Maybelline, whomever. They last forever. The only reason I'm using this, normally I would use one of the cheaper sprays to wet the pigment. But for some reason the jasmine scented one dries my jawline out. Nowhere else, just the jawline. So I've kept it for moistening shimmers when I put them on. I'm just going to use the tip of the bristles there just to blend it lightly into the mats that I've got at the edge there. How pretty is that? I mean, come on. Right, dry the brush off and go back in to take the crown. This is a very, very soft shimmer. Do not press very hard in it at all. Um, very, very light touch needed. I mean, I'm light touched anyway, and even I'm getting, you know, some bit bubbling up. Now, as I was saying, with this eye, with these deep creases here, I do have to stretch the lid out. If I don't do that, instead of it being blended across the lid, as I'm about to show you, it packs, the pigment itself packs into the creases loosely rather than being blended out like this and then throughout the day as it dries when I move my eye it ends up getting into my eye, it falls down my face, it doesn't look good um, and it can be painful when it gets in your eye as well because let's face it pigments no matter how eye safe they are, they're eye safe for the skin, not for the eye level, you know. Um, but what I do, you will have seen there, I only pulled it out as far as I needed to. I didn't pull it out to my ear roll. And as soon as the area concerned was covered, I let go. But do not pull your lid out like that unless you absolutely have to. Because you could see from the other side, I didn't need to do it with that side. Again, I always get more fallout this side. Right, my lovelies, I am going to pause you while I pop some foundation and whatnot on. And then I will be back to finish this eye look off with you. Now, I'm going to have to wait for the next time I press record in order to speak to you. But for you, my darlings, there will be no delay. You will see me instantly. And I am back. Hello. As you can see, I have gone for colourful brows again. Um, I'm just using the soap brow trick at the moment. Brush them through with uh, dry soap. Um, and then using one of these. Picking up powder and running it through the brows. It's that simple. Right, let's see now. Let's finish off this eye look. Right, grab a flat topped brush and I'm going to go into. Let's go into Royal Pain, which is the pinky one. And just. Run that along 
Regular viewers will know I struggle quite a bit with um, watery eyes, which is why I don't tend to put anything on my waterline because literally 20 minutes time it will be streaming down my face anyway, so there's little point. But I'll start off like that. And then this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. I love it because it's flat topped, but it's chunky. Now you can use um, just an ordinary blending brush or a smudger brush. This just happens to be my favourite. And I'm going to go back into Deviant, which is that first colour I used. And I'm going to use that just to gently buff along that lower lash line and just smudge that out a little bit just to give it a bit of smokiness and definition and yes I just put the brush right in my eye regular viewers will know that's a regular occurrence because obviously I'm blind in this eye I have no peripheral vision so I'm relying on muscle memory and a viewfinder that's quite a long way off and uh, sometimes I cock it up as you saw just then right now this is a cheap lip brush that I bought off of eBay probably a decade ago and I'm going to go into Wet Jewel. That's one of the two new formulas that he'd got in here. I'm just going to pop that just up under the tail of the brow each side. Just helps lift the brows and make you look more youthful because apparently, along with everything else, ladies, our brows are sag as we get older as well. More things to look forward to. And then in a corner. And again, regular viewers will know I like to bring mine down under the tear duct and just blend it in with the colours that I've run under the eye because for my shape eye, I just think that finishes it off nicely. You don't have to, you can just leave it at the middle bit there like that. Entirely up to you, it's your face, you paint it how you want. Okay, I'm going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to stick probably some more of that wet jewel and try that as a highlight on my face. Put some mascara on, choose a lipstick, do something with my hair. And I'll be right back again for you, my darlings. No delay. I am back. Okay, I used my Bag Out Bang mascara today. I'd forgotten how wet that was. Got it everywhere. Had to wait for it to dry and get rid of the dotty bits again. That's why I stopped using it, I think. I did use that... Um, eyeshadow as the highlight it is ta -ta 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 -ta, which is exactly how I like my highlights not just blinding to the golds but dazzling enough that they can't see what I'm up to and I use one of my Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks that my lovely friend Hedda sent me in a shade very Victoria this happens to be my favorite of all of the Charlotte Tilbury ones. Right, so this is my finished look for the flowers of the zodiac for Aquarius. Again, I'll pop a picture there for you so you can just have a quick peruse and see what you think, how well I've done. And I will tell you just a little bit about them. As I was saying, the flower for February are the violet 
and the primrose. Now, because obviously the Aquarius star sign runs from January the 20th through to February the 18th, there is a crossover there. But in terms of flower of the month and crystal or gemstone of the month, what normally happens is they'll take whatever star sign it is for the first of that month that star sign correlates to these flowers regardless whether you were actually born in the preceding month. So for my Aquarius babies, these are your flowers. The violet represents loyalty and faithfulness. That's really nice. And primroses are best given to the person that you cannot live without. Which is why you would often see, particularly in the 50s, bride's bouquet would have a primrose in it somewhere. Not necessarily on view, could be tucked around the back where only she and her husband know it's there. But it'll be there somewhere. Right, now, if you are regular 4F babies, please check you are still subscribed. YouTube are still cutting people left, right and centre. Even if I'm still in your news feed, you may still have been unsubscribed, so please double check that. Uh, give me a like on this video please, that really helps the algorithm, really helps get it out to other people. Uh, if you have the ability to share it, that too would be lovely, thank you so much. And leave me a comment uh, in the comments section below. Please excuse my throat growling. Are you an Aquarius? Do you like the flowers that are representative of your star sign. Did you know the meanings behind them? What are your favourite flowers? And if you list in the comments what your favourite flowers are and you're not an Aquarius, please let me know which star sign you are because I personally find that extremely, extremely interesting. If you are new to my channel, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you've enjoyed it here. If you've made it this far through, I'm guessing there was something that appealed to you. It would be absolutely wonderful if you would like to join the 4F family. We are the nicest family on YouTube and it's super easy to do. You just click that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey. Ring my bell, ring my bell, and then say yes, however many times YouTube are currently asking you to say yes, and hopefully you'll get sent a notification for, I don't know, one in four of the films that I upload. Speaking of other films of mine, I have an awful lot that you can look through. Uh, I have the full four Zodiac film series for Capricorn. And uh, I believe there are two of the Aquarius films up already. I have one more to film after this. And I, of course, will be doing the remaining ten star signs. But I haven't just got that. I've got an awful lot of different films. I'm sure you'll find something that in intrigues you or pulls you in. So basically pick a playlist and settle down for the afternoon. Now, something I have said for some considerable time now, and I'm hearing it echoed in other channels, is grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and indulge. What better way to spend some lockdown time than catching up with different tutorials from me, 
or answering questions or challenges. Go on, have a check through. Bet you find something you like. Right, my darlings, that's quite enough for me for one day. All that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.